The first thing that I want to mention is that these are all the questions that we're going to be doing. So there's five of them, but I will be splitting them up over different pages in order to save space. So if I go forward there, we're going to do the first three questions on that page, and then we're going to do the last two on that page. But these are all of them that we will be doing. So let's begin. They tell us that we have a 20 kilogram block that is placed on a rough surface. Haha, <laughs> rough. So that means friction. At 30 degrees, a constant force F. Um, some people I've seen in the past, they see this word constant, and then they think, oh, constant velocity, constant. But no, guys, they're saying constant force, okay? So that's actually nothing. Uh, you don't even have to worry about that word constant. They're not saying constant velocity or anything like that. When they say constant force, it's always a constant force. This force never changes, okay? And then it says that it's acting parallel to the surface, is applied to the block so that the block moves up the incline. Okay, now this is important. We are moving at a constant velocity. That is so important. So what that means is that the acceleration is zero. We must remember that. So the first question for, oh, and then it says, sorry, a constant kinetic friction force of 80 newtons acts on the block. Okay, so that's quite nice. And then it says for the first question, state Newton's first law. There is the definition over there. It says that a body will remain in its state of rest or motion at constant velocity unless a non-zero resultant force acts on it. Number 2.2. .2. Now, there is actually this thing that I've been noticing with a lot of learners. They, they have identified, and they are correct, that the mark allocation for a free body diagram is a very nice way to see how many different forces we would need. So because this one is worth four marks, it typically means that there are gonna be four different forces. But you must remember, you know on a slope we have gravity, right? Now, there are two different ways that you can do a free body diagram when you are on a slope. So pay careful attention quickly, guys. The first option is that you, you um, keep FG, okay? And then the second option is that you break FG into components. Both of them are correct, okay? So if we keep FG as it is, then what we're gonna have here is we're gonna have an applied force, okay? So we're gonna have an applied force, we'll say F. Then there's going to be, there is friction, they did tell us that. So if we are, we, the, we know that the box is definitely moving up the incline. Be careful there. Sometimes this force is acting to the right, but the object can still be going downwards. Maybe the, uh, maybe the gravity parallel is larger than this force or something like that. But they tell us that we are going up the incline. So friction would definitely act in the opposite direction like that. Then there's normal force. Now I'm gonna just say N, but if you say FN, there's nothing wrong with that. On the memo, they actually allow for both. So there's your normal force. Now over here, you could say W, all right? But what I'm gonna say is FG, but notice that I've kept it like that. I didn't break it up into parallel and perpendicular. So let's count how many forces there are. There's one, two, three, four. And that is where the four marks comes from over there. Now, if we break it up into components instead, then what we would get is there would still be a force. There would still be a friction force. Uh, there would still be a normal force. But now we would break it up into FG perpendicular and FG parallel. Now some of you might say, hey, Kevin, but now there's five different forces. Ah, I agree with you. But when you, when you look at the mark allocation for a free body diagram, if you choose to use FG parallel and FG perpendicular, that only counts as one, okay? So I hope that that makes sense. Okay, now me personally, I prefer to break it up into components. So I'm going to erase this part now. Because the reason I like to break it up into components is that it just allows me uh, to easily see the different um, fac forces and the different factors that are contributing. Okay, so for four marks for the next question, calculate the magnitude. Magnitude is just the size of this force over here. So this is definitely just gonna be a F net equals to MA kind of um, question. So 
the different forces. Now, all that I do, and I'm going to say up the slope is positive. Now, all that I do is I look at my free body diagram and I look at all of those forces acting like that. So that means I'm going to have F minus friction minus FG parallel. Okay, those are the three forces that I had. And then I'm going to make that equal to MA. So now I can go and fill in F. That is what I'm trying to calculate. The friction force is 18 newtons. Fg parallel, some of you forget, but that is mg sin theta, not cos. So that's going to be um, 20 times 9.8 times by the sin of 30. And then that's just going to be equal to the mass, which is 20, multiplied by the acceleration, which is zero. We said earlier that the acceleration is zero because we are moving at a constant velocity. And so now we can just say F minus 18 minus, now I'm just going to type all of this, 98 equals to zero. And if we then have to go solve, we would find out that F is equal to 116 newtons. And you don't have to say up the slope or down the slope because they asked us for the magnitude. When they say magnitude, it only means the size. You don't necessarily have to also give the direction. Okay, so I'm just going to remind us that we've now worked out that this force was 116 newtons. It then tells us that the force F is removed. Okay, so the force F is going to be removed when the block reaches this point X over here. Okay, so before we even read further, think about what that would do to this object. The object will continue to move upwards for a little bit because it has a bit of momentum. But because we've removed that force applied, the object will begin to slow down. Okay, but it won't just stop and start moving in the opposite direction. It will still continue to go up the slope a little bit, but then it will begin to slow down. So it says that the, bl the block continues to move up the surface and then comes to rest at point Y. Okay, so it's going to stop over here, up here at point Y. Um, so it says that assume that the kinetic friction force acting on the block remains 18 newtons like it was. Write down the net force acting on the block as it moves from X to Y. The answer is not zero, okay? So let me quickly explain. So if we do our free body diagram, now that this force has been removed, so we can actually just take that force away. Let's use some tipics. <laughs> Guys, I must share a funny story. Um, so you see how I just changed the color of my pen to white so that I could, so that I could erase that line. Uh, but the problem with that is, is I need to be able to see where my cursor is at any given moment in case I want to go choose a different pen color on my screen or a different eraser. So now when I change it to white, it takes me like at least 30 seconds to try figure out where the eraser is and everything on the screen because because my cursor is white, I cannot see where it is. So I have to like try, just keep tapping until I eventually click on the right button. So yeah, random story, but that does happen. So it's quite funny. Um, okay, so we're gonna quickly draw a free body diagram now um, because now you can probably see, I'm not sure if it shows, but you can see that I've got a red cursor that's moving around. But when it's white, I'll quickly show you. Okay, so now I have a white cursor. See how awkward this is, now you can't see anything. Maybe you couldn't even see the red one. I can't even remember if my cursor ever shows. But if it does, I mean, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're gonna do a new free body diagram. So everything stays the same, really. We still have friction. The object is still moving up the slope. We must remember that it's not moving down the slope. Um, there's no applied force, there is a normal force. There's still gonna be gravity parallel. And there's still gonna be um, Fg perpendicular. So it says write down the net force. So some of you might have said zero, but that's only if we were still moving at a constant velocity. And that was only earlier on when the applied force was still there. But that applied force is not there anymore. So we're not moving at a constant velocity anymore. Our object is actually going to slow down. So the net force is now going to be um, just these two. Okay, so just those two there. And they're both gonna be negative because we're going upwards as positive. So we're gonna say minus F minus FG parallel. And so that's gonna be minus 18 minus MG sin theta, which is 20 times 9.8 times sin of 30. And if we had to go fill that in, 
it's now going to be minus 116. Oh, I guess that does make sense. If the upwards forces, and I see that's why it's only for two marks, the upwards force was 116, so the downwards force was also 116 because we said that the object was moving at a constant velocity, so everything was balanced. Then if you take that other force away, then of course the only other forces that are still there would be these ones, and so it would just be negative 116. Now they are asking for the distance between points X and Y, and that is for four marks. Right, so I'm going to take a grade 11 approach. If you are a grade 12 learner watching this right now, you could probably use your W net equals to delta EK kind of formula. That will work, but I'm just going to do a grade 11 approach, um, which grade 12 learners can also use, and that is just to use F net equals MA to find the acceleration. And then, and, and you can't say that the acceleration is zero because we're not moving at a constant velocity anymore. And then we can combine that with this formula over here later on. So the F net is, and let's say upwards is positive. Okay, so the F net is minus 116. The mass of this object is 20. And so if we have to go work out the acceleration, we get minus 5.8. Um, so let's just say that Therefore, the acceleration is negative 5.8 meters per second to the minus 2. Now we can use that acceleration in this formula here. We know that the final velocity is 0 because they are going to, the block will come to rest. Uh, the initial velocity is 2 and the acceleration is minus 5.8, but we don't have the distance. So the final velocity will be 0. Let me actually write this over here. So the final velocity will be 0. The initial velocity is 2, see there? That's when just before that other force was removed. The acceleration, please remember that there's a negative, and then the delta x. Okay, now you can solve this in multiple ways, but I'm going to take this over to the right-hand side. So we'll end up with 4 equals to 11.6 delta x. And so if you had to get delta x alone, you would say 4 over 11.6 and that should give us 0, 0,34 meters.